Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of the Bread for Soul Convos with myself, Sir LSG. And um, this show, basically what we do here is really share knowledge and experiences to anyone who wants to be in the music industry by inviting different guests, you know, who've, who've been in the industry, who've done a lot of stuff, who've groomed a lot of people too. And today is no different. I've got a legendary figure in the house, somebody who's groomed so many artists, you know, so many careers that we know are because of some of his works, you know, and I'm talking to the legendary Oskido. How are you, my brother? Hey, I'm fine, my guy. How are you doing? Yeah. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Thank you, Fruitman. Uh, firstly, I want to say thank you so much for, for spending your time like this. You know, I know you are a very busy man. You are a family man too. So I just want to say thank you for that. Uh, no, bigger, bigger, bigger. Okay. Yeah. So, um, like I explained to you, I've been doing this. This this episode would be the eighty fourth episode, and I've started it uh, in April, just to kind of share knowledge, you know, and and bring guests who who are knowledgeable about the music industry, and you know, we cannot be talking about development of house music in south africa without bringing in you as a legendary figure and your story uh, Hrotman, has been well documented and rightfully so you know um but i want to start by asking you about self-belief you know because of where you started your journey you know starting out in hillbro and looking at the levels of success that you've reached um how important really is self-belief and believing in something that you that you want to do how important is that or how important was it in your own career uh, well i think i think it's very important for you to have a vision and understand what you want uh, in order for you to achieve uh, the goals you know, it's more of a goals kind of a thing. Because once you have a vision, a clear vision, it gives you that direction. And you start following that direction properly. And also, what's important is for you to say that I want to wake up and do it. Because at times you can have a dream and say, this is what you want to do. But the doing part becomes an obstacle of saying that okay let me put effort into it mm. because that's why a lot of people you find that they've got dreams but due to the fact that they don't take time to do whatever dream they have that thing just vanishes mm. and and uh, we could make so many examples of very talented people you know that when especially when they come into the industry you could see that you know, this person has got some kind of vision and, and there is a lot of support and belief behind them and then it doesn't get through. And I asked Tebe, like when he was on the show, a similar question just about usually when when artists don't follow through, especially like um, at some point you see artists falling off and, and, and really stopping following their, their music careers, um, and usually in the in the media, what we would know as as a, as people, as consumers, as fans, usually it's only about the lack of discipline. But we we don't get to know about other things, other aspects. You know, like you mentioned, not following up with your dream, and and those are not are some of the aspects that are less talked about. And I think sometimes I are, are quite an important part of why people stop doing what they do. But I want to ask you, like. How do you then deal with situations where you don't feel motivated, even though you, you, you know you've got a dream, you know what you want to do, but you just don't feel motivated or you don't see the results coming? What, what keeps you going in, in situations like that? Uh, for me, I think it's doing small little things because, you know, for you to achieve something, you know, you don't have, you, you can have this big vision, but you find that you can't do it all because all you have to do is that you need to get into a habit of doing things just like in the morning when I wake up, you know, I take a 15 minutes meditation or I stretch my legs. Then after that, I brush my teeth 
you know, it's a routine. So you start following the routine. And after that, I look at it and say, okay, what do I want to achieve in this particular moment? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Then I write down my goals and say, okay, this is what I want to do. And then I work on that. Because most of the time, you spend most of your time waking up in the morning and you find that you haven't achieved anything. Mm -hmm. So therefore, what keeps you motivated, just the fact that I can brush my teeth every day, you know, mm -hmm. uh, then from there I know I've achieved that. Mm -hmm. But what is the second stuff? If I have to go and drink coffee, I'll go and drink coffee. If I have to say, okay, now this is what I want to do, mm -hmm. I want to do it. Even if it doesn't, you know, it's just small little things, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then from there, I start building blocks on that. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Then from there, I start like, you know, getting things uh, together. And then it motivates me when I've achieved, you know, that's, if I've achieved that, uh, that situation, whatever little thing which I want to do, I get motivated. Because mm. therefore, if you start a missing blocks and then say whatever, that's when you get demotivated. So it's better to start by small little things, perfect them, it becomes a habit. Mm. And, and I can relate with that so much because when I started my year this year, um, I was very demot almost demotivated you know this is even before COVID-19 I was even looking into getting a proper job again you know like working nine to five and really only doing the music thing as a side thing but until I got into some videos on YouTube on how to maximize your mornings you know so I started waking up at, at, at a certain time so I would wake up maybe half past four every morning or five o'clock and meditate as well, exercise, you know, stretch a bit, watch something motivating. And that's another thing that sometimes when we are not motivated ourselves, I think it's also good to look onto other people who are doing things that might motivate us. And I'm bringing this point because um, I read somewhere uh, you, you were doing an interview and you were telling, you, you were telling the story of how you got motivated by the movie uh, Beat Street back in the days, you know, and if you could please share that story with us. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, for me, I mean, I was a young kid uh, at that time, and for me, when I saw that movie, uh, it was back in uh, 85, Beat Street, it's a hip-hop movie, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's when I saw that what culture can do you know, in terms of the music industry. Guys, it's a movie we talks about, it's a break dancing movie, you know, uh, he, uh, doing body pop graffiti, the culture of hip hop, and how those guys started from staying in the ghetto, but later they started sitting in the boardrooms in New York City, making decisions mm. in the entertainment industry. So therefore, I looked at myself and I mirrored myself as a person and I say that, you know what, one day, that's what I'm going to do. Through watching something, it motivated me. Because, you know, then from there, I started saying that I'm going to be that guy. I started living my life and say, this is it. this is the culture. I started more, you know, as a body popper, you, you know, yeah. and more on that, having a ghetto blast and all that and all that. Later, I developed myself into a DJ, later, you know, having a part of uh, a record label, signing artists and be what I am today. Mm. And, and bra, uh, uh, your, your journey, uh, Rupman, like it's really an inspirational one, you know, because for me, when I look at somebody like you and with the work that you've done, um, I get motivated because I, I feel like if, if you could do it, you know, like, I, I believe that, you know, if you could do it and you could share your journey and your stories out there and we know, you know, the steps, some of the steps that you took, I've got a sense of belief that I, could, I can do it myself as well and I can help other people do it too, you know, especially by sharing stories because um, for a long time, 
before internet, you guys kind of always had to figure things out for yourselves. How to run a label? What's publishing? You know, some of sometimes you find things along the way as you go, but at the moment, uh, it's not necessarily the case because the internet is there, the information is there. It's just really about finding your way and navigating your way and and being patient, being consistent, and and all of those kind of things. Um, but I want to get into um, Kalawa because y you, Bradon, and, and DJ Christos, you know, you guys formed the label, and last year. At the Delicious Festival, you had a 25-year celebration of Kalawa Jazmi Records. Um, and for me, what is really the biggest black-owned record label in South Africa, you know, and I, I, I could say in Africa even because of the work that you've done. But I want to understand the position of Kalawa right now, you know. Um, are, are you still pushing, you know, the same way you were pushing with regards to getting new artists onto the label and growing the label like that? Yeah, I, I mean, if you can look at historically, uh, Galawa, I mean, it started as Galawa, you're right, with me, Christos and Don, uh, and Bradon. But later, you know, we met Jasmine Music, uh, you know, then we meshed, then we became Galawa Jasmine. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, we started releasing different artists, developing artists, and you know, working as a team has made us to be where we are today. And then uh, we've grown the business where we've developed. That's why what happened is that normally when the artist becomes bigger, they want to open their own record label. We assist them to say this is it. For example, a good example. The coffee came in, he wanted to license, you know, he was new in the music industry, but he didn't know, he wanted a home. But Kalawa Jasmine gave him a home to license his product. So as Dira Afrotainman, so therefore, we look at business as also growing up, uh, other, other people, mm. you understand? And at the same time, we also sign our artists. But when our artists become bigger, you know, we give them a platform to start their own thing. And then we start looking at the young ones and then we start developing. So that's what's been our business model mm. uh, in terms of the growth of saying. That's why we are well known as University of Kalawa Chess. Hey, yeah, definitely, indeed. And, and so many students have went past that university, you know. Um, and, and with regards to Kalawa specifically, are you, are you then also, is there a... Um, are you also growing other people to kind of take over the legacy once you guys have left? You know, is there that succession kind of uh, gr uh, grooming happening? I know like um, Bobster has been with you, you know, like he, he, as your boy, like coming up, um, he's been with you like from YFM, Metro FM as well. So I, I want to know, is there an almost like an aggressive way of grooming more people to take over what you guys have done and, and carry on with it, um, probably also once you guys are, are, are no more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the thing is that it's always very important to have that. You know, although we are helping other people, you know, we sign people, we develop them, and then they start growing themselves. Mm. If you can see where Black Motion are, mm. if you can li listen to see where Maporisa is, all those people, if you, you're talking about Bobster right now, he's got his own label. Mm. You understand? Maporisa has got his own label. Mm. You know, all these people started, Mafis, although they've got their own thing going on. You understand? So, therefore, we sit as board of directors within the label, and then we start like uh, helping people to run their own entities. Mm. You understand? Mm. And then at the end of the day, we're going to look at the board and say, okay, how does the story of Kalawa then mm. keeps going, do you understand? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Krotman. And um, I, I want to get into uh, the relationship between uh, yourself and, and, and Louis Vega, um, because when I when I had him on the show, and he, he told a couple of stories about how initially, like he was one of the, well, actually, Bra Greg was saying this, that, that Louis was one of the people who, were at the forefront of supporting local music in 
in the states especially back in the days of the winter conference in miami and and there's been we've always seen this exchange of works between kalawa and, and vega records as well you know um throughout the years um but the story of south africa Frontman has always been like they, we've always had people talking about south africa is the biggest dance nation in the world we are the biggest house music consumers in the world um according to like your view do you think that we have fully um maximized that position within within sa because we know house music is big in south africa but we see we don't see a lot of endorsements and those kind of deals happening for house music and dance music artists in south africa or at least enough of it um what are some of the things that are lacking still within what we need to do here locally Well, for me, I think uh, you see uh, on my side is that because I'm trying to touch what you are touching on. You've touched the Louis, you've touched uh, the lacking thing. So I don't know which part of the question which you want me to answer. Uh, let's start. Let's start with the Louis, Louis one. You touched the, the endorsement. You touched. So I don't know where which direction yeah. you, want to, you want me to think. I think let's start. So with with the Louis uh, relationship, uh, from now. Well, what happened is that uh, as myself or Skido, you know, I've got the outfit, which is Kalawa Jasmine, mm -hmm. which is a record label. Mm -hmm. But also, I've also got my own personality as Skido, as a DJ. Mm -hmm. This is where I started all this thing. Then with my friends, we formed uh, a unit called DJU, which is myself, Christos, Vinny Da Vinci, uh, DJ Fresh, and Christos. Mm -hmm. And then we started, because long back, uh, before even Kalawa started, there were only a few DJs only playing. Mm -hmm. Then from there, we decided that we want to find out what was happening overseas. Then we went over to Miami as five of us, mm -hmm. you know, on a mission. Then we formed a body called DJU. And from there, that's when we wanted to, we went to the Miami Winter Conference mm. to see what other people were doing in the dance music space. Mm. And then when we came back, you know, we started saying that we we're going to form this unit and start teaching young people mm. uh, about the music industry mm. as this unit called DJU. Mm. And then uh, from there, this is when we started, uh, I went in at YFM, this is when our YFM brought in Louis Vega, mm -hmm. you know, and then the next winter conference went there and Louis invited us on the Masters at Work thing because mm -hmm. he saw what we're doing here in Africa. Mm -hmm. And we started having that relationship, you know, mm -hmm. uh, all of us individual as DJU. Mm -hmm. uh, then we started having the South African Music Conference which we've been running for almost 15 years, yeah. where we are going giving workshops to all the young people, you know, putting the dance culture together, yeah. you understand? Hence, when you, we, we started consuming, as you are saying that we are the leaders when it comes to consuming dance music worldwide, yeah. you understand? Then we started, you know, teaching a lot of young kids, but also bringing the experience from overseas, Louis Weber, Frank Roger, all of them, you understand? Yeah. So from that conference, this is when, you know, people started learning how the music industry runs, mm. you know? And then uh, I went back to Kalawa on my outfit with BOP. Uh, I remember going to one conference when I saw Louis Vega playing with Roy S. Mm. You know, Roy S is a jazz musician. Yes. And that's when I first saw a DJ playing with a live keyboard player mm -hmm. and when i came back we were doing the bop project with bruce mm -hmm. then i say that you know what because remember the beats per minute for quite was like 110 whatever mm -hmm. then we started upping the tempo to up 120 mm -hmm. then started calling all these live uh you know we started uh including live instrumentation into our theme because I'd seen that Louis Vega is working with the older generation. Mm. 
and the first person who came into even the older generation they didn't like what we're doing as Guaido. Mm -hmm. But when we called a person like Prayu or Moses Mulelekwa, they came in to say, listen, this one to be part of it. Mm -hmm. This is when we did the Zavalaza project, the BOP. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think that was one of the best, biggest record which opened the industry for the culture in SA to be dealt with overseas. Mm -hmm. Masters of Work then signed that record worldwide. And that's when we released BOP worldwide mm -hmm. with Masters of Work. We started having that relationship with WIF mm -hmm. Then fast forward, then we started seeing a lot of all these young kids coming up, you know, through the conference. This is when, uh, Black Coffee, you know, came in, he did his thing, he had the biggest records. And when we went to Miami, he actually had that biggest record with Vusi. Mm -hmm. It was one of the huge, huge, huge records. And wow, people started noticing what we were doing, you understand? Mm -hmm. And through that conference, Black Coffee met his manager, the guy who's been managing him through our DJU conference, a guy called Lionel. Yeah. The guy came in for mastering. And through networking, he was smart. He started networking with the guy. Because remember when you do this conference, it's how you network. And he started getting contacts to say, no, I mean, I want to come to France. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's how we started developing. And he was already becoming a big name here. Mm -hmm. But he sacrificed himself to say, let me go and be playing for France for free. Mm -hmm. And this guy right now, when you look at Black Coffee right now, is the biggest thing globally through the networking, through the way of saying that, listen, let me meet, when you meet a person, how do you network, how do you start thinking? We started thinking beyond bigger what our vision was, mm. but to say, you know what, you guys have given me this thing and check where it is today, mm. you understand? So when you talk about lacking, we lacking where people are missing the networking, that networking can open up doors for you mm. to understand. Mm. So therefore it's very, very important for you when you've got an opportunity to network with different people, find out what they're doing and then start checking out what's happening and then be in touch with them and start developing your own strategy and start running your own thing. Mm. And I think that's so, that's so important to note uh, because um, most of the time, especially with, house music people né? we've gotten to a point where sometimes we feel we don't connect enough with people from other genres and we might not necessarily you don't even have to enjoy somebody's work um to respect their work you know if somebody has done their had done a lot of work and they, they are successful in what they do i give them the respect for that and then the, the then i i think that the task for me comes to how do I get what I do? How do I use some of the tools that they do within my thing? But also, how do I keep connecting with these people, you know, so that we can kind of grow from one another? And I think um, for the longest of time, I just wish that locally um, dance music could really thrive as much as it should be because the ears are there, Krutman, you know, like people are listening to house music, people love Ama Piano, people love Deep House, it's still, you know, um, very well respected. Um, what Tira did in Durban with um, uh, Devon Guaito, I mean, not only Tira, but um, him and, and people from Durban. But I think we need to see more of that and we need to see more of that growing to a point where there is those networks between brands and between artists. Um, because you mentioned SAMC, I want to get onto that because I'm a student of SAMC too. I started going to the conference in 2000 and 2008 um, when it was at VITS. And I think I learned so much from it. You know, I didn't know how to write an email when I, when I went to the conference and I got out there how to approach labels, how to network with different people. Um, but I've seen kind of a change in the way the conference has been run because you you would do it here in Johannesburg and then take it to Durban, but the Joburg part um, of it um, seems to have gone gone out. What are some of the the changes or what influenced some of those changes with regards to SAMC? 
Well, at the end of the day, uh, remember all these things, it's also got to do with the interests of uh, the province itself, the development now, the arts and culture platform. So therefore, uh, the case at end have always shown interest to say, this is what we want to develop, do you understand? Mm. Putting money in going into township, dev and tourism, came on board to say this is what we have to do to understand because at the end of the day is that uh, we're doing the good work out there mm. but people for us to do that good work it's got expenses mm. you know to be done but if say we've got uh, remember we are taking our time to do this mm. so therefore that's why most of the time Devon tourism has come in on board to come in to say listen we see what we're doing what we are doing. So therefore, we've looked at it that is in the world is going to do it during Deb in July. People travel all over the country, just like in Miami mm. as a city. Mm. Remember, the concept came from Miami Winter Conference. Mm. So the Deb as a city came in on board to say, listen, we love this thing. It's developing the youth of the country. So therefore, hence, uh, it has been mostly positioned there. Mm. And um earlier today uh, because i i know that you are so big on developing and uh, talent earlier today i had um on the show i mean yesterday i had um miss jones who is also you know a student from the conference but also was a beneficiary in the uh, oskido i believe foundation you know who are some of the people who really you know came out and and took the chance by by the horns uh, specifically coming from the i believe foundation well, the concept was, uh, we approached uh, NYDA, uh, the concept was to say, let's look at provinces where we can build studios for young people, then we teach them about how to run uh, the studio business, mm. uh, do you understand? And also with the other section where we're giving sound systems for guys, you know, for sound hire, where a person can have a sound system you know what I'm saying? Then they can start sound hire business for weddings, for whatever. A small studio a sessions was for you to have where you can start recording demos in your hood and all that. Mm. But what happened is that we went throughout the province, cadres of NYTPA who sponsored the whole thing, and they funded that program where young people, you know, were given studios, and we teach them, we give them these studios, and then they start like you know, producing themselves, you know, for their community, it can be church, and then we create a website for you, you understand, so that people can do studio bookings, there's business, because music industry is not about only making business, mm -hmm. it's not only about making music, there's got to be studio, there's got to be marketing, there's got to be, so we give you all those tools, mm -hmm. you understand, and I mean, Heavy K came from that project, um, uh, Moby Dixon came from that project, so a lot of kids came came out uh, for, uh, for, for, from that uh, from that uh, I believe project. Yeah, and um, uh, and it's such a dope thing because, uh, like, when I was speaking to her, Miss Jones, and she was telling me how at that time when when that project came uh, to when she became part of the project, um, she had almost given up in the music industry, you know, and things were not looking so good. And I think it's some of, some things like that, that can really rescue someone from, you know, leaving everything and, and then help comes through. I think that um, we do need to, to see, I, I believe that like the government kind of needs to find a way of um, really helping more people, you know, and, and directly because you know, with people like you, uh, when 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 people like you do these things, it's people who have been on the ground. It's people who know and who have contacts with the musicians, um, the aspiring musicians. You know, unlike when it's just the government doing things, but they don't really have people on the ground who know who to get and who know how to, you know, train those people, how to really move them forward. Um, but I want to take you back a bit and and talk about. Mafikeng, because I'm from Mafikeng, and um, you've helped also so many other people from Mafikeng. Um, when I had Tabo on the show, and he was telling me stories of 
you know how they got signed to Kalawa, him and Bruce. Um, but there's specifically a group that I wanted to ask you about, and this is Crowded Crew. I don't know if you do remember back in that day, what was it about them that really like uh, drawn you to them? Well, I think it was their unique style, you know, because um, remember uh, that time uh, we had sent Tebe and Bruce, Bruce as a producer, and Bruce had done this record for them, and you know, they had this lingo of theirs, <coughs> which really was such a unique element. <coughs> uh, so therefore, because I mean, that's what one, I mean, my strong point is in R, I listen to uh, thing and for me when i had that record it was something different and the lingo you know was remember we're driven we are driven by our own, our own culture mm. in whatever we are doing it wasn't more of an american culture but it was like the culture which was happening there in map town mm. and when uh, one had that record we had to say wow yeah, what an amazing record and i mean we we, we signed them. yeah and, and 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 talking about mafi king because um when i grew up like I, I got to learn about how the city was so big on entertainment you know there's one flyer i've got here um and i remember i think it was a 1995 flyer presented by a uh, uh, trendsetters it was uh, trendsetters hair studio but uh, another person who was there it was floyd um organizing the event but on the lineup there we had uh i'm gonna put it actually on my screen we had boom shaka tebe trompis penny penny uh, arthur on the djs <laughs> there was vinnie da vinci oscar the big o and there was christos was there bob mabena the late bob mabena was there and for me, it's like we hardly see this kind of colorful events where, you know, you've got people from all all kinds of genres really enjoying. But I want to ask you about Mafi King specifically. During that time, is it true that that town was, was really popping? Yeah, I mean, uh, remember then when the Kwaito, because that was during the Kwaito culture, you know, back in 95. We remember that uh, our music wasn't played on radio. We didn't have, we had a youth of, uh, of that time. No one believed in us, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, the only thing to organize was to organize our own concerts. Uh, so therefore, I used to travel down there. And uh, I think the first concert we did was called Imbizo. Uh, you know, at a company called Bad News Productions. I'm sure on that flyer, there must be Bad News Productions. Yes. And um, then from there, Kwaito, we took Kwaito to the people. You know, we, we started going more on the students' vibe, TNT and all that and all that. And that time, Map Town was the half because, I mean, there was uh, Unibo, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it, it was happening that time. And when we took the concert there, we partnered with Floyd uh, to do that concert. And remember that we are coming from an era of bubblegum where people were used of playing instruments, but we we're playing back tracks. Mm. So therefore it was a new culture of having DJs and artists thing. But also for us, it was more of a promotional kind of thing. That's why you see Pumshaka at that time, because uh, uh, we uh, the record labels uh, denied us to say that they didn't like our music, major record labels. Therefore, we're using it also as a promotional tool to take it to the people. But the youth of that time started loving that thing. So, Map Town that time, because the Unibo activity and Radio Bob, you know, was happening, it was the hub of the music industry, which we felt it was, it was an underground movement. Mm. And that town was happening and we felt that, I think it was a, a Little Amore and Dem. Yeah, Little Amore and Dem. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we used to take the picnic stuff. Because, you know, it was, remember that there were festivals which were happening. But this was now for the youth culture. Mm. It was something new. Mm. So therefore, we're catering for the youth. And that town, that time was booming. It was huge. Uh, 
And that's when even the 60s started kicking in, uh, the 60s vibe. Mm. But, you know, it just at a small scale when uh, 60s kicked in. Mm. So every time everyone knew that Map Town was the entertainment hub. Mm. And and um, also, like, just still on Mafi game, because um, having stations like Radio Pop, you know, and, and, and Pop TV and Mabatu TV, and there was such a a big investment into the arts in Mafikeng, you know, and, and for people who are not from Mafikeng, um, they, 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 I mean, it's still there, but at that time it was more prominent. There was a, a center called Mabana, and Mabana was a, a, an arts center. It had a, an entire music school. So after high school or primary school, you could, after uh, school is out, you could go to Mabana and go into a music class and, and you'd be trained like that or go into a karate class and there were um, dancing classes, anything concerning art. And it's because at the time, the government of Bukhutatswana, um, you know, was really heavily invested in the arts. They built um, a mega studio really at, at the time. I, I think it was co it, it was uh, the second best studio in the world at, at um, the Bob Studios. And um, I, I just want to know from you, like your from your own experience and your views would you say that the government here in south africa is not investing enough within the arts well it's i think it's getting to know i think what what we're lacking is getting to know what the young people want and they are investing you know they are doing different activities but I think uh, it depends on, on their strategy. But I think if uh, the strategy was out there to what's, what we are talking about, these, uh, these are centers which were there in Bob, you understand? I mean, this is where Bruce came from. This is where Tebe came from. Uh, we, we will see, but I think they are investing in arts on on different formats, but I think they need to be on the ground where people are at, you know, youth centers, you know, where we can develop young people into other other things. Mm. And um, also, like, you know, for somebody who, who, who's who been in the industry, you know, for such a long time, um, Rodman, and you've seen artists coming in and going, um, if you could you know, like name two or three things, core things, especially now um, that artists should be doing to remain, um, to have that longevity that you've had along the years. Like what are some of the, the things that you would advise on? Well, for me, it's uh, for you to be, you know, have an open mind and like what you're mentioning earlier, we've got internet now, research, find out what other people are doing to understand, and then uh, have a dream and you start working on that dream and you start like, you know, working on yourself and say, this is what I want to work, on. have a vision. Mm -hmm. And once you have that vision, you have a plan. And then you start working. Don't just have it and say, oh, this is what I want to do, whatever. If, for example, uh, I'll give you an example. Kaspar Novest mm -hmm. came back to me before he started uh, fill up to say, Rutman, how have you sustained yourself in the industry? I'm worried that, you know, I've done this thing, but I don't know how I can then build myself. But I've got this dream of building, you know, this thing. Uh, I want to do this show at the dome because no one has done it before. Mm. For me, it was a young kid who had a dream and it was in his vision. Mm. And for me, it was this in the dome. I said, you want to do the dome. I think I know it's doable. All you need to do is to work on it, have the right team and work it. Because his worry was to say, you know what? Uh, in the music industry, you can have things, but 
I've seen that you've always got things to fall back on, even when things are bad and then whatever. Mm. You understand? And you can see that this is the guy who had a dream. He put up his team properly. Do you understand? And he said that it's in I'll do what's not been done. I'm, I am going to fill up the dome. Mm. And he started putting things together. Have the right team around you. People, do you understand? Because you don't have, you can have this dream, but do you have the right team to make things happen? And there he is. He started like building. That thing has become a brand. Mm. Start creating things which are, which are going to become brands. So that even when you are sleeping, because he does it now every year. You understand? Mm. And then he knows that even if, say, he doesn't have kicks or whatever, but that thing has become a brand. Mm. For, you know, you become a, a trendsetter. So therefore, once you have a vision, you put up the right team and then whatever. Because all of us, always have dreams and say, this is what we want to do. But for us to Im to, implicate, uh, to implement, it becomes difficult. So here is a young kid coming from uptown saying, I want to fill up the door. And he filled it up. Because mm. he had to come in and say, this what they, but that thing has become a brand for him. Now he's filling up stadium. So it's very, very important for you once you have that dream. Work on it. Get the right people to work with you. Get partners, do you understand? Mm. Even if that's why you you must have a brand team who are working on your brand. Mm. So that when you are out there, people look at you and say, wow, this is it. You sit down, you give them and say, this is it. Because there are a lot of people in every wood uh, who've studied marketing, who've studied different things, who've studied different things. Even, even when it comes to production, you don't have to be able to play. There are people who are playing who are real players, but they are not, they don't have the concept of production. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. If you can look at a guy like PDD, you can't, you can't play. But what happens is that you put up a lot of people who can play. He says, this is my vision. This is the song I want to do. This is the best line I want, whatever. You get all those people in and then whatever. So it's very, very important for you to have a plan. Once you have a plan, put up your team because you cannot be good at everything. Mm. So therefore, you know, because I know my weaknesses, but I know my strong points. Mm. If my strong points was to say, this is what I want to create, this is what I want to create. Then from there, I start creating all those things. Then I get my guys in the hood. There are so many people these days in the hood who are not doing anything. My friends or whatever and say guys this is what we have when we run this we're gonna run this we're gonna run this and you start putting those building blocks and that's how you start achieving things mm. yo and and yeah uh, bro man that's that's so uh such profound you know because Kaspar, Kaspar is a good example i mean check what an amazing boy he is to understand mm. he's you know people can laugh at him and say that he didn't finish his metric but is better than most of the advocates or lawyers because you can get that money, you can get that five million within one show. Mm. Rent. Yeah, no. So I, I, I want to get like you know specific uh, insights, especially when when an artist comes through to Kalawa and here's a new artist. You see, there's potential in this artist. Um, what are like some of the at least one or two things with regards to teams like what are some of the aspects within a team that really an artist cannot do without especially in today's age well it's for him to one respect the game understand that this is a business because most of the artists will come in and then from there they will feel that uh, this is the thing and then what happened is that you put the right marketing around that person so that he doesn't meet his interviews. Or at times you find they've got a hit. They don't respect to go to interviews. You know, they sleep. They don't do anything. When you call them, their phones are off, whatever. They wake up after six, five days because they've seen themselves on Tuesday. So respect is very, very important for you to have. But it's very, very important for you to put the right team for them but if they don't respect that team then it's useless to have them. Mm. 
And who are in, in, in those teams, uh, Brauskido, like for you guys at Kalawa, like not necessarily in terms of names, but, you know, uh, in terms of titles, like you would have management, I, I assume you also have uh, maybe PR. W what are some of the other elements uh, or make of those teams? Yeah, is to have a person who can sample the radio mm. properly so that your song is played on radio. Mm. The game has changed these days because uh, uh, the music industry keeps changing. Streaming has become big to get a person who can put the songs on the playlist. But when uh, the interviews happen, they have to call the artist. The artist must avail themselves. They must be able to go and promote themselves, you know, for free. Mm -hmm. And then once their name become big, you know, the marketing team needs, you need to have a marketing team. You need to have a strong social media pl uh, uh, players who can come in and talk about things which are happening within your thing. But you must be there as the artist. Mm -hmm also to support that that structure. Uh, no, I know, I think I understand um, clearly because also, um, so it doesn't actually, to somebody who's watching, it doesn't matter how much or how many people you have around you. If you are not there present as an artist, if you are not putting in the work, you know, things will not go properly because sometimes artists get to a point where there's so much success and they've got people doing everything for them um, to an extent where they feel like now they don't have to do anything. They don't even put the work. Um, and I find that sometimes it could be dangerous. Like um, when, when an artist is so successful for one year, maybe they've got that one hit or one album that really sold and everything's going well for them. And before you know it, cause time goes by so quick. Um, the artists are not nowhere to be seen, you know, because of, no one wants to be interviewing them anymore. They didn't pitch for certain shows. The discipline just went out of the way. Um, would you say discipline is one of the most um, crucial factors with regards to success in the industry? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you don't have discipline, I'm telling you, you, you have it for that moment. Remember that God can give you that talent. But if you are not disciplined, you are disrespectful, People will spit you out, you know, because mm. there's always a new kid coming out, you know, there's always a new person. But if you become big headed, you don't respect the game. Remember this thing for you for long longevity, mm. for you to stay longer in the game, you need to respect the game. Mm. You understand? Yeah. For example, um, I make a point. I mean, I started playing back in 93 or whatever, mm. but the people who are meet these days, when I have to do my different, I diversify. I don't look at music only. I use music as a networking platform. Mm -hmm. Or if I want to present, you find that person was a SRC at Unibo or at VETS or whatever. They call me for a gig. Mm -hmm. But today they are running multinational companies. They are CEOs. When I go in to pull my presentation, you say, oh, I know you were scared. Do you remember I once spoke to you at my thing because I respected the time. I wasn't big headed, so it's easy for me to get things going. Mm. So therefore, it if you don't respect, you can be big now. But if you don't start disrespecting people down the line, it's not gonna happen for you. People look at you and say, ah, this one, I don't even when you come in, they'll shut your door. Mm. Here I know. Because you won't have a hit. Remember, you won't you can't be making hits by why. Mm. Understand? Mm. But what happened is that the music industry, the entertainment industry, the good thing is that it makes you to open up doors for other things, mm -hmm. to understand. For example, now I've gone into the restaurant business, mm -hmm. you understand? I'm not depending on a promoter to call me, mm -hmm. do you understand? Mm -hmm. I've got my own restaurant, Daruma by Oskido. Yeah. But the people who come in there is the people who are CEOs, ministers, People are on top class and then whatever. They respect me. And when I'm sleeping, the money, is, it's like, he hasn't get nailed. I don't wait for the promoter. Mm -hmm. You understand? Right now, uh, during this uh, lockdown, I created something called Legend Life, mm -hmm. which I started streaming, where I invested, I bought cameras myself, and then started teaching myself and my 
my, 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 my son how we can put things together. And we created a brand. It's now a brand. You understand? We started streaming it. We started learning about internet, how do we do streaming platforms, how do we do that. But now MTV have come on board to say, wow, we love this thing. This thing is live every Friday on a platform, on a bigger platform. So now I'm on TV production. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, I like the moves though. <laughs> uh, because uh, I feel like um, diversifying is such an important thing. In the past, like, okay, for me, for the past 10 years, I've worked on TV, you know, I've worked with the who who um, connected us together. Um, I've worked for them for the past 10 years, and then I became a freelancer, let's say, in the past two years, um, so that I can focus more on my things. And what I've seen is that diversifying also allows you, in a time like this, you know, if um, obviously I, I could assume the restaurant has been affect, impacted, but things are opening up, and, and, and um, actually for restaurants have been open for some time, but just the importance of having different streams of income you know um how important is it for artists to not only focus on do on doing music and really open themselves to other things yeah uh, the problem which we have is that you see uh, i always tell you in some of the artists most of our artists at Kalawa that we normally get gigs only on weekends friday and saturday and you find that maybe you're on studio, you understand, you don't make music while, while every day. Mm-hmm. But what happens is that from Monday to Friday, what do you do? Remember, you've got 24 hours mm-hmm. uh, in your time, do you understand? Mm-hmm. You work, you sleep, you sleep for eight hours, and then you've got the other thing. But what do you do with that thing? Once, for example, I'm known as a skill, how do I push myself? Right now, I'm a record label owner. I've got a radio show at Metro FM. I own a restaurant. Do mm-hmm. you understand? Mm-hmm. I make sure that I start uh, checking and say, where do I start moving into different things? I look at things. I sit on Kalawa. I've got my own company, which I do. We are one of different things. Mm-hmm. So therefore, I start networking. So therefore, it gives you that platform to start thinking different things. Because what do you do? Because most of the time, that's why we find most of the artists frustrated because from Monday to Friday, they're waiting for the promoter. It's either Bakrain, Diba, Pusa, as when, you know, they get into drugs, they get into all that stuff. Because by Azuti, you know, Baba Bonikasi, they are on TV now, whatever. During the day, they are with the girls and they are drinking, they are doing all that stuff. And when that door closes, that's when the frustration bit out. So it, it happens in not only in the music industry, but also we've seen it happening in the soccer, in the in, in the soccer industry, in different things. So therefore, networking in any other field, if you want to be in the business, is very, very important. That's why it's very important for you to diversify. Mm. Uh, thank you for that, Rotman. And just my last question is that sometimes we see, most of the time, as people, as supporters, we would see successful artists as, you know, perfect, that nothing ever goes wrong, that uh, when when somebody's successful as Hosquito, they never have problems and stuff like that. And I've grown to learn that it's not really the case, it's just that you are dealing with your problems differently. But I want to ask you, what are some of the, especially um, um, in recent years for you, what has been, what have been some of the most difficult things or challenges to get around? Well, remember that life, uh, me, I always believe that in life is joy and pain. Mm. You know, there's no perfect happiness. Mm. You know, you can't have 100% happiness. You understand there's always going to be disappointments and all that thing but it depends you, you're always going to make mistakes but are you learning from your mistakes the music industry has changed drastically i mean we started when we started we started from cassettes we moved into cds physical stores now all of them are closed you understand but what do you do right now and uh, for example when you look at the record label with kalawa uh, 
uh, the fee, uh, now we've created that catalog. But how can we make that catalog work? Mm. How can we now look at Kalawa as a brand? Mm. Can Kalawa only, only stay only creating music? Yes, we've created music. But can we tell the story? Can we go in the film industry mm. and tell the story of Kalawa? Can we start creating documentaries about it so that the label itself, even when the artist comes in, that's why it's good when an artist at Kalawa comes and say, hey, we want to leave now, we want to open our record label. We say, I know, we support you, go in. Do you understand? We don't have frustrations, we start fighting in court mm. or whatever. Do you understand? If you can see historically, that's what we've done. Pussy Swash has got her own record label. When I see her, what she's doing now with Beyonce, I say, wow, yeah. check what's happening right now. Yeah. You know, she's got her own majesty records. We support her. You know, and I say, when I see what Zinke is doing uh, as a brand, do you understand? I look at it, I support it and say, you know, Zinke, it too. Now we're doing this pyjama party, mm -hmm. you know, which he has also on MTV. We support each other. Then you sort of like uh, start supporting all these things. Mm -hmm. you understand? But if you become like hard-headed, and then whatever. This is when you start holding, you start having disappointments. You know, when I see Zonke doing it on concerts, yeah. you understand? I like, wow, this is what this is what I like. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. When I saw her feeling Cape Town, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I have a relationship. When I have to give you a call and say, Zonke, hey, I'm doing a trick. Hey, you know, uh, you've got your own thing, you've got your own thing. You will come in, here is a song. Yeah, we do wire theater. You understand? It's yeah. a skit of record. We're still working together. So therefore, it's very, very important to have that open mind. And when you see people growing, support them. And at the end of the day, measure your success. Mm. Not by how much money you have, but how many people you brought up when you see them going and you say, when I see Black Coffee rocking, Black Coffee now calls me. He calls me for different things. He doesn't call me for music. You tell me, say, Buddha, here are we investing in property. Because I used to fight with him in terms of cars and say, why are you buying so many cars? <laughs> yeah. Let's get into property, man. But right now, he teaches me property. He calls me and say, you know what? I'm in Portugal. This is what we have to do. Mm. You understand? For you to invest in things. So therefore, it opens up this whole thing mm. of like thing, uh, uh, thing. We make mistakes. We learn from our mistakes. You understand? Mm. And there's got to be that joy and pain People, even with artists, they will come and go. It's painful when you see your child. For example, you, when you've got a child at home, uh, like my elder son now, he has, he has to leave the house. Do you understand? He's starting his own family. It's painful, but at the end of the day, it's, it's that time when things have to happen. So it's very, very important for us to understand that um, Throughout all this change, do you understand? Mm. Uh, as I say that from uh, from CD, uh, from cassette to CD, what what has changed is made. Mm. It is made now, and artists now can easily upload themselves and start their own record label. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. And then it's easy to do that because the world has changed. Mm. Do you understand? But what can you do as a label? Mm. What do you have? I've got catalog. We've got catalog. How can we use that catalog? Because there are people right now, streaming has become the biggest thing. Mm. How can people look at and say, okay, can I have a trumpet day today? Mm. Mahasman, who's going to buy? The guys who are dancing, Goma Fikin, Long Back, whatever, those are my clients. Mm. Uh, you know what? I've got my Nyonyoba. How does it remind me? Do you understand? I've got catalog. Do you understand? Mm. So therefore, it's very, very important for us to understand that now there's different revenue streams. A song can create different revenue streams. Mm. And what we have now as Kalawa Chesme is a catalog. But right now we're looking and say, how do we start maximizing the catalog? Because right now, if you look at if you look at streaming is going to be the biggest thing. Mm. Mm. Yo, I know. Thank you for the lessons, Rodman. I'm um, just in closing, I wanna ask you about uh uh, Brabop Mabena, you know, who we just laid to rest um, this past weekend. And like my my encounters with him, and it's so 
profound because I've, I've noticed a similar trait with a lot of successful artists within the industry who have stayed the longest time, yourself being one of them, um, uh, Bravini, you know, um, uh, Christos being one or another one. Like most of you guys have got this welcoming thing um, about towards young artists, you know, and, and Brabop was the same towards me as well. Um, I do um, a residency mix on, on Power FM and I got there because of him. And, you know, I, I was like trying to get some shows towards him, but he, he always had time for young people. Um, but I want to ask you, what are some of like one or two things that really you would say um, you you learned or you got from such a, a spirit as uh, Brabop Mabena? Yeah, Bob, I remember that uh, Bob was, uh, me, I've always come from the underground movement. So Bob was more on a commercial radio when he was a Bob. And then when he moved at Metro, because uh, 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 you see, we were underground DJs. Me, Vini, Christos, the guys you were mentioning, mm. we've always been underground. We're not commercial. Mm. You understand? So uh, Bob has always been radio, gives you that platform and all that. So when, because uh, we're collecting a lot of records, you know, vinyls and all that stuff. So when he moved to Jobbik, uh, because he was so popular, you know, when we joined uh, Metro, uh, FM that time. Mm. So he came to me, he approached me to say, hey, my man, I'm getting requests for gigs, mm. but I don't have records. Then he came to my house, uh, he make, I was staying in Hillbrook, you know, uh, and then I gave him about 50 records, you know, of saying that, you know, go in and then whatever, so that you go and play. You know what? And I, I, I selected, you know, my, my, my vinyl collection and I gave him that stuff. Mm -hmm. And from that time, you know, I, that's how I started relationship with him. And then he had those records for years. Even now, every time when I meet him, he always tells the story and say, this is the guy who started me, who started me off. He gave me his vinyls mm -hmm. and he helped me this way, this way. And we started having that relationship mm -hmm. and RIP, we've lost, we've, we've lost, uh, you know, a man who I respect the, lot, uh, the most, but we all know that we're going to leave this world. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, we are all strangers here, mm. but it's, we need to prepare ourselves for our next journey. You know, I think the more you give, this is how God is going to reward you one day. It's very, very important, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people must understand that we are only strangers in this world, mm. you understand? So therefore, wherever he is, condolences, you know, to the family, and may his soul rest in peace. Yeah, may his soul rest in peace indeed. And um, I think similarly, Krotman, I think I want to say, um, as we close this uh, conversation, I want to thank you firstly for your time. But I think secondly, for your contributions in the music industry, you know, um, and I'm saying this with with all honesty because many of us, many of us would never be doing what we do as musicians, as DJs, as producers, if it wasn't for people like you, you know. Firstly, introducing this music to us, especially when you were importing um, dance music and when you created the Quieto Records, but also after that, still putting your time behind developing other artists, behind the DJU movement, SAMC, myself and many other people have benefited greatly from your life, you know, and, and I just want to say um, we need to celebrate people like you. I want to thank you so, so much, Prowskido. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. I always tell people that it's a, it's a teamwork movement. You do understand? Uh, it's like... Not that we are superheroes, right? Yeah. But it's like we move together as a tribe. We move together. If you can look at the crown, the print Galawa, we're moving together as a tribe. There's no one who's bigger than the other uh, part. When you look at a full human body, you know, when you, you must check when your body, maybe when you've got flu or when, you know, you broke your arm or whatever. Your functionality is not good. Even say an engine, mm. 
you know, when you can take out that uh, piston, a small little thing, so small little things count. So therefore, it's not like a one-way thing, but it's the influence which you get from other people for you to share ideas. You know, I'm check now, you've got this online thing. It's good creativity. You know, I'm learning from what you're doing. So we have to learn from each other. And I think that's what's key in this life. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rupman. And uh, to everyone who's watching, thank you so much for watching. Please tag somebody in the comments uh, who might learn from the conversation, who might also enjoy the conversation maybe, and also share the video so more people can see it and more people can learn from it. Otherwise, let's remember to stay creative. Peace. Thank you.